so silent We both know you ain't as quiet When we in private Girl, I know just what you like And I will provide it Hey there, General Red Review here with Old Colony Pest Control. If you're having pest problems in a commercial or residential setting, we're the people to call. Veteran owned, based in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, Old Colony has been here servicing your homes proudly, and we plan to keep it up. Our team is fast, efficient, and reliable. We go above and beyond to cater each project's individual need. No task is too much for us, so give us a call. 774 400 5993. Again, the number is 774-400-5993. Hope to hear from you soon. General Red Review, out. Business owners of Rockton, I understand your frustration, I really do. A lifelong dream of yours is starting to feel more like a nightmare. You're constantly working on ways to improve your brand's marketing to customer service, plus making high-quality product even better. But there are days you feel they're trying to stop you before you can start. So you start questioning your decision to bring your business here. Hmm. First, they make you pay $175 to register your business. But the next town over charges $35. Why? You're jumping through all their hoops and paying all their fees, but is it worth it? Because even after you get a location, opening the doors isn't something that happens easily. The city doesn't help promote businesses. Why should you promote the city to businesses? Why am I getting harassed and discriminated against by city officials? If there was an issue, why can't you inform me? So I can acknowledge the problem and make the right changes. Why would anyone want to invest their hard-earned money here when it's more like a gamble? And if I do stay, why can't you tell me the properties that are available? Should I take my business elsewhere, where it's more welcoming and business-friendly? All these questions and concerns I've asked our city officials, and for some reason, no one seems to know. For many years, I've said having a business here is very risky, and I can understand why they left. I wouldn't want to be treated like that either. Extortion and intimidation are huge problems here, and they need to be taken care of. They have no business being in your business. Counselors should build a relationship with you and your staff hearing your concerns. With over 400 vacant properties, you should raise a concern to release the list. Hi, I'm Mike Smith, candidate for Ward 4 City Council. On November 2nd, vote for me, the candidate that's pro-business, bringing the workforce and revenue back to Brockton. It's time for us to speak up. This is Beyond Marie, and you're listening to Hoobazoo.com. You still got your boombox? Play something and turn it way up.
staring down, looking at the blood stained concrete. Hear the dead MC flying at my feet. It took a nine millimeter rhyme straight to your mind. Damn, my better split. This, this is my time, so I make my way up the block. Get the whole base and lock that uh. up. Crack the Colossier and grab the phone. Call one of my troops up. Hope the soldiers when he says, Yo, what's up? What's going on? Make it quick, cause I'm trying to get my Stella on. Go. Uh. You grow up in the. These lyrical assassins tried to pull a hit, and then boom, came a noise from the other room. It was the boys in blue with the SWAT crew. They got us locked up for lyrical murder. It's one of them charges that you never heard of. It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, we're killing all your podcasts like the HIV virus. You want to battle this kid? Huh, don't even try this. Back the... Uh. Up, think again, count to ten. You want to grab that mic just to get done in? It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. Was he African? African. African. No. He was American, and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Okay, okay. Jew. Okay. It's an odd crime for a Jew to yeah, I'm pretty docile. Okay. All right, your boys, since one broadcasting live from the City of Champions, you are listening to the booth. It is October 12th. We are flying along here into fall, and the month is almost over. We had our marathon for the first time in Boston Marathon history yesterday, um, and I've got a lot of topics to talk about in regards to this past weekend, an unbelievable sports weekend if you are a Boston sports fan. And I got to thank my guest for last week. Special guest Ken Diesel R Square came on. We broke down some politics. We broke down some legal stuff. And um, today, my special guest over in the left, you guys can see, he is a city councilor candidate for this election, Mr. Gary Keith Sr. Please introduce yourself, sir. How's everybody tonight? I'm Gary Keith Sr. And I am a candidate for Councilman at Lodge uh, in the great city of Brockton. Um, we just took the fourth and final spot in the primaries, and I'm hoping that uh, after this uh, interview tonight that I can gain, you know, some of the uh, some more voters to actually push us through in November. And we've got some stuff I got to talk about real quick. Let me get through my sponsors here and get into the show. MDB Electronics, Michael Douglas, Barreto. If you got a controller that needs to be fixed, check them out. You'll get your controller back within 24 to 48 hours. MDB Electronics. Also, check out my recording artist, Viana Marie, who performed at Prova this year. She performed at Fall River last week. Viana Marie is streaming everywhere, so you want to make sure to check her out and follow her out. What's going on, Mark Powers? I see a lot of people in the chat. Uh, tactical target systems, when you want to go down to the range, if you want the zombie targets, as you guys know, my big fear is the zombie apocalypse, so I'm getting myself ready for that. <laughs> and uh, I got to practice with my targets. Check out my cousin's website, rebelrom.com for clothing. And you guys see the ad here, Old Colony Pest Control. I'm really pushing this guy. He's It's a veteran-owned business, Carl Bunnell, residential and commercial, 774-400-5993. We push a lot of veteran-owned businesses on this network, thanks to Travis Project and Oscar Mike Radio, who won Best News Podcast for 2021 last week. Big ups to him and congrats to him. And before we get into the news booth, I got to talk about a story that happened here last week that I wanted to mention. I don't have any pictures because it's, I really didn't want to stir this pot, but I do have a counselor who is, you know, a candidate who's on. We can kind of talk about this one first. Last week, uh, we had a terrible tragedy. Uh, shots were fired over on Tabor Ave. Uh, police responded. When the police responded, they found a body of a young man in a vehicle, which ended up being uh, 28-year-old Christopher Gomes, who was well-known in the Brockton community area, Cape Verdean community, was also, I guess, a great soccer player, good soccer player. Um, and he was in that vehicle deceased. Um, as the officers were investigating the scene, a resident in that area, Kevin Serpa, 32, opened fire on the police officers, striking one of the rookie officers four times, who was ended up being transported to BMC. Um, Kevin Serper then held off the Mass State Police, Brockton Police, in a four about a four and a half hour standoff as he barricaded himself in his house. And around nine thirty, 
he took his own life. Um, I know there are some people who are upset about some things that are going on you know, here on this show. My prayers and blessings and my heart goes out to everyone who lost someone in this, you know, this, this terrible incident. And, and I know that Mr. Serper was wearing um, racist paraphernalia and things of that sort. But again, people, you know, a lot of times when these shootings happen, a lot of times it's attached to mental health. I'm not making any excuses, but let's get all of our facts first. Because again, if mental health is attached to this, and I'm pretty sure Kevin can speak up, mental health is something that's avoided. This is something that they've cut funds on. This is something that's dumped a lot of homeless people out on the streets is because we're not helping mental health the way that we should be. Families aren't getting the help that they need when it comes to mental health. Um, so again, let's wait till all the facts come out. But again, as I said, you will can you can also be a racist and have mental issues, as we saw with Keith Luke, who committed a tragic, tragic race hate crime here in Brockton just after Obama got elected. So let's touch base. I'm gonna get your comments on this one first. Uh, again, it was a, it was a major tragedy for the city of Brockton, and you know it was like a double it was like a double bashing here. We had this shooting um, here, and then the next day at Brockton High, we had a student, you know bring a gun to school, you know, as parents. And here's the thing about this thing, guys. The parents are licensed gun owners. The, the kid brought the gun to school. He really had no malicious intent. He just brought it to school. Um, parents, they're legal gun owners. Lock your crap up. So this don't happen, because this could have been a, a terrible tragedy. I'm going to let Gary speak on both of these topics real quick before we get to the meat of the conversation. Well, first of all, I agree with everything that you just said, but... Um... And I said it on social media already, my condolences to the Gomes family. Um, like you said, everything I heard about this uh, young man, um, he was very well liked. And uh, my boys actually knew him also. Um, I didn't know him personally, but you know, it was a tragedy on both sides. Uh, you know, um, to Mr. Gomes family, who basically had to get a, a that tragic call. And, um, to the other gentleman, uh, the Serpa uh, family, um, you know, of course, they his family got a call too. So um, at this point here, you know, it's um, it was a tragedy all the way around. Again, um, one of our uh, men in blue, you know, having to uh, be rushed to the hospital. You know, thank God he's okay. Um, it was just a terrible tragedy. The thing about it is that. We have racism everywhere, but I didn't know we had radicals like that still around uh, Brockton. And as soon as it did happen, it brought back the memories of uh, Keith Luke, yes. you know, right away, like you like you mentioned uh, before. Mental illness abound, you know, basically um, wearing the SWAT sticker. You know, the thing is, is that, like you said, no excuses. The thing is, is that if he had mental illness. If his family knew about him, they should have actually been trying to get him the help that he needed. I know we lost a lot of services, but there is no excuse to this. OK, there's no way to to downplay it. You know, um, wearing the SWAT sticker means you had some underlying hatred issues. And uh, whether there was mental issues with it or whatever, the family should have, you know, addressed it or and brought it to the attention of somebody to actually to have give, getting this guy some help. Maybe he shouldn't have been left alone. Maybe he shouldn't have been free to roam. You know, um, there's so many things that we can actually uh, come up with, you know. Um, well, he shouldn't, have been allowed, it, he shouldn't have been allowed an access to a firearm. If correct. his family was well. If his family was well aware of his mental issues, he should have never had been allowed to be around any firearms. And that's Anybody. first and foremost. Right. And, you know, it even comes down to a thing, and I'm sorry, Keith, to say this, you know, because we got a lot of licensed uh, uh, gun owners in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something, if you have someone in your house oh, that is that is, uh, that is is unstable, then those guns need to be removed for the time being. I'm, I, you know, we have to err on the side of caution, you know, on a lot of things here, you know, because, uh, you know, like you said, we can lock them up. But if you know something, some people think they're being careful, but they're not careful enough. Okay. Newtown, Connecticut. Um, Newtown, Connecticut. Huh? Newtown, Connecticut. Yeah. The, the Sandy Hook Correct. shooting. The mother was a Correct. licensed owner. She thought her son didn't know where the key was. And yep. he did know where the key was. He had been watching That's her true. where she had the key. key. So again, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You got to think about that. You know, do you, do you, you really keep, do. yeah, you really got to think about mm -hmm. that. You know, so, and then, like you said, the next day there, you know, with, uh, 
with the, the kid bringing the, uh, the gun to school. Mm -hmm. um, just before coming here, actually, I, I stopped in on the uh, school committee meeting tonight. Yes, where tonight they were was the emergency something. meeting. Yep. Yes. And, you know, I wasn't able to stay the whole time because I had to get back here, you know, to get online here with you. But, you know, it brought me back to um, I went through the first two years of busing in, at High Park High School in Boston. OK, we had riots all the time, like you heard from High Park High School, Charlestown, uh, South Boston. Uh, the thing is, is that after the, the first couple of riots and we actually were fighting with our hands. OK, no right. guns and weapons, you know. Um, but we had metal detectors installed, okay? And you know, you took a, it took maybe five or ten minutes longer to get into school, but they got efficient with it to where we were in there on time. And after every class, we actually had hall monitors that did the sweep, okay? Uh, and what I mean by that is that we stopped going. I don't care if your if the classroom you you were coming out of was in the next classroom to the left. All the traffic went to the right, so you had to go all the way back around. OK, so people wasn't bumping into each other in the fights, but we had what they called a sweep. OK, the hall monitors did a sweep after every bell to where there was no one in the in the, uh, in the hallways, oh. in the corridors. And you know something? It worked. It worked. And these are the things that I say all the time. If you want to go forward, you got to know what's happened in the past. OK, and we have to do that. And you know something? Brockton High, I was as I was sitting there tonight, I thought about it and I said, you know, they need to come up with some type of formula to where I know that if you're in the yellow building, right, you might have a class that's in the red building. Well, they need to come up with a, with a situation. They need to come up with a plan to where if you're in the yellow building, all your classes are in that yellow building to where you don't have to cross over from yellow to red and red to blue and blue to azure. You know, mm -hmm. um, everything needs to stay. Each building needs to stop being on his own stand on his own with the classes i feel you, know? you. i never you know and i never thought of that before and, and you make a great point because a lot of times when things happen at the school is during you know the changing of periods and changing of classes and you're right if you just kept yellow in the yellow kept blue kids in the yeah. blue you would cut down on a lot of that sneaky stuff that's going yeah. on and yeah oh yeah i i agree with that one. Oh man yeah, yeah. You know, so they really need to. And I just thought about that tonight. And I, I look back on my own experience of high school, you know, and, um, you know, and we can do that, too. You know, they look back at that and they come up there and, you know, something it might cost a little bit of money. We got all this extra COVID money or stuff that came in. You know, first of all, again, if you're coming into the building, if you're in the yellow building, you have to enter through the yellow building. OK, and you're not able to go to the other buildings. So there's no coming in through the blue building to get to the yellow building or whatever, you have to go through your door. And there's one entrance. Maybe we can have three metal detectors at each one, just like if you're going through the airport. Right. Okay. Right. And you check the book bags, the kids go through the, the metal detector. And you know something? This is Brockton. I hear it all the time since I'm involved with politics. Yeah, you're going to get your naysayers. You're going to get your people that complain. But you know something? If it saves one life, That's right. it's worth it. If it saves one life, it's worth it, you know, because the last thing that we want to do is to be at work or whatever and get that emergency call on our phone that says the school's in lockdown or someone's been shot or whatever it may be. You know, if it can if it can put some peace around the school and let them get back to school as normal as it used to be in the past, besides COVID, I'm all in favor of it. What was the climate there tonight? Because I know this was a big meeting. This was a big emergency meeting that they were having involving the school and transportation issues. What was that climate well, there tonight? It was, it was actually, uh, uh, it was in the small theater, but it was almost, uh, it was probably a little bit more than three quarters uh, full. Nice. You know, um, so there were some people there, you know, everyone, but the, the, I think that on the downside of it, there's so many events and uh, meetings going on tonight, which I think that, and that's one of the bad things in Brockton is that uh, our um, coordination of special meetings and things like that, everything clashes That's like there's right. a a zoning meeting tonight there's a um shirley asac had a special meeting in ward seven um senator brady had something going on you know over here and then you had the school that's the emergency meeting there you know we need to coordinate somehow a little bit better than what we do yeah you know, you so know people everything should go through the city of brockton calendar first you know if anybody's yeah. posting or setting up an event 
go to the Brockton City Hall calendar for us, see what's there. And, you know, mm-hmm. we do. We do see that a lot. I've seen it where, you know, Mike Smith is, you know, he's got a he's got a cleanup that's going on. But then there's something else on the other side of town that's taken a lot of people away from helping with the cleanup. You know, so it it, it, it does happen. Um, we've got a lot of people in the chat. Ron Drago said, putting the responsibility for ensuring that the mentally ill doesn't get access to the guns hasn't worked until now and it won't work in the future. Yeah, because we have irresponsible people. I totally agree with that. And until people become responsible with their guns, they're going to keep having such tragedies. Basically, gun owners are not holding weight when securing their weapons. You know what? Then that's true. There are some good gun owners, but as we have seen in the past, you know, sometimes some of these tragedies could have been, you know, right. kept out of harm's way if the people just did what they were supposed to do with their legal firearms. You know, that's so, right. and, so, you know, and on that note to, to, to the person that, that's in the chat there, the thing is, is that for me, the kid that brought the gun to school, mm-hmm. the kid that brought the gun to school, I would actually um, see that's an error on the gun owner. OK, yeah, and, oh, yeah, and, you know, yeah. and, and you know something to me, there should be some type of discipline on that to where whether it's a very that's severe right. warning, whether we uh, pull your license for whatever or whether we pull it for good, because you know something, it could it could have been a tragedy. And I believe, I, I believe, I believe if Ray Hennison or some of these other guys that I know who are licensed, um, and I, and I've taken my, my training, um, if I'm not mistaken, if the, if the parents were involved in this situation and this, and if this is the case of how it went down, I believe there is a possibility that they could lose their license or have their LTC suspended for this incident. So, yeah. um, I'm pretty sure that's, that's in the works if it, if that's how it exactly went down. Because it, again, mm-hmm. it's a major tragedy if this kid. And here's the thing: I, if I'm not mistaken, the gun wasn't loaded, so I'm pretty sure the gun owner who owned it, you know, made sure that there was, you know, a mag wasn't in it and it was empty. Right. Um. You know, but yeah, it this could have been a tragedy. And hey, kudos to the kids who right. went to the office because in this day and age and generation of the no snitching and things of like that, I gotta applaud. And, and here's right. my thing about this. We have this thing right now where we, I feel like in this generation, we have a lot of bad parents. And I know there's some people out there who are going to say they don't like hearing that, but we do. We have, a, I'm involved in youth sports and, and it's one of the, you know, it's just bad right now with the type of parents that we do have out there in society right now. Um, I applaud these kids who did go to the office and did turn this kid in because first of all, you know, they're going to get ridiculed because that's how some right. of these kids are. You know, now now you risk being ridiculed or bothered for the rest of the school year because you did something that you realistically should do. I feel like that we should have paid more attention in praising those kids who turned them in, turned them in. True. I felt like the mayor or somebody should have really, really did something for these kids, and I hope they do. I hope they do something because it, it's it's tough. It's tough being a teenager in any city, not just Brockton. It's tough everywhere being a teenager. It is tough, so. and you know. In in the political realm, you know, like, uh, and these kids said exactly what we talk about all the time. If you see something, say something. Mm-hmm. And they did that, you know. Um, and like you said, they had as much to do um, to diverting a tragedy as anybody else, you know. And, um, you know, for myself, you know, um, it, it's basically, you know, I used to keep my ammo and my, and my uh, weapon in a different location you know, mm-hmm. for safety purposes, you know, mm-hmm. um, is that, it, you know, is that smart to do if you ever needed it in an emergency? You know, maybe not. But the thing is, is that you have to go to the extreme sometime to make sure that, you know, uh, safety comes first when it comes to that. You know, um, when I, when I was working on the police force, I actually used to, um, back when we had revolvers, you know, um, I used to come home I, and I, I had in my closet, I used to put my handcuffs through the uh, the open, you know, I used to open up the barrel, put my handcuffs through it, and I used to let it hang from there, but there was no, you know, so you couldn't shut it unless you had my handcuff key, you know. Um, You know, you just got to do crazy things, man, with it. Safety is is number one. And, and, you know, it's one of these things where you have to have gun safety. You know, I'm, I'm in the house where I have, you know, two autistic children. And they're mm-hmm. high-functioning autistic children. So a lot of people, when you say autism, they think that the kids are slow, and they're not. 
High functional autistic kids are kids that pay attention to every single detail and things that you do. And God forbid, you know, if you're in a home, you're a licensed gun owner, and you got to make sure you got to make sure nobody's watching you put your stuff away, make sure nobody knows your code or whatever, because like someone like an autistic kid is going to pick stuff up quick. So these are things as a licensed gun owner that you have to train yourself and teach yourself and protect yourself. It may seem stupid, but... You know, and it's it it's just one of these things. So, um, so great conversation. We actually spent about twenty minutes on that, and um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm real happy with what's going on with that. Oh, I hold on, I got a Facetime video. Let me take this Facetime video on the air. It's Kevin Jeffries from Happy Hour with Lido calling in. I think he's trying to call into the show. Are you trying to call into the show, Kevin? We're live. <laughs> I thought you were trying to call in and get in on the call. I was going to let you on, but um, let me hit you up after the show. Okay. All right, bye. <laughs> That's Kevin Jeffries, host of Happy Hour with Lido, uh, calling oh. into the show. But he was he was in Dollar Tree. He's looking for LED lamps to brighten up his picture. So when he's doing his podcast, so that I'll touch base with him. So getting into what you're, you're, you're running for this seat for the city of Brockton, and yes. I, I, you know, I kind of warned you. You know, we, we we went a little bit over with this interview just because we had some things to brought up. But when you're running for office, and and you know, everybody puts out there that we have to trust them, we have to believe everything that they're going to tell us, and they're not going to be, you know, the typical politician. Now, you know, we had this big election, presidential election, with Biden and Trump, and Biden won. And, you know, people want to change yet again. And here we are. We're 10 months into this, you know, Biden leadership. And already I'm pissed off because the spin is already out there. You know, White House and Biden put out there. And I'm going to talk about it in Biden bombshells. But real quick, they put out there that, you know, they've got this economic growth and jobs and this and that. And unemployment's dropped. And it's like, okay, I know politics. I follow politics for a long time. One of the reasons why we have job growth is because the pandemic ended and everybody went back to work, number one. And one of the reasons why unemployment dropped is because they cut those benefits for people and a lot of people, again, went back to work. So I hate when they do this political spin. Uh, yes. Because what happens is, is, and here's where it's dangerous for me. I follow politics. I've been following politics. So I know my vote matters. I know where to vote. The problem is, is that We have so many people who don't understand politics and they're misinformed and they believe this bullshit. And it it pisses me off because you can have the most nicest person out there putting and making you believe that they're going to do the best for what you want. And then they get in and it's just the same old, same old yet again. And and this is Uh what pisses me off about politics. Because I'm like, when I saw this, I'm like, come on now. We all know why those numbers are that way. Don't try to spin this because I'm not stupid. I know why the numbers are the way they are. So don't lie to me, Mr. Joe Biden. So That's how do right. we how do we trust you? And we know that you're going in and going to take care of our needs and not be another person getting in there and then be the same old spin. True. Well, you know something? That's a very good question there, Keith. And I'll tell you what. See, first of all, I'm not a political insider with what we already had in there. And if I was, This is like I said, this is my, you know, I ran a few times now. And if I was an insider, I would have been elected already. Okay. Right now, I'm running against some of the powers that be to where they already have an heir apparent. Okay. I shocked everyone in the election by taking that fourth and final spot because I have been out here um, running, you know, a few times. My, My platform has not changed. I've been running on the same thing that I've always ran on. And people now are seeing that everything that I said, is true. Everything that I said is the way I presented myself came out the, the right way. So the thing is, is that people now are hearing me come off and saying what I'm doing, but they also see me walk the walk because serving serving Brockton isn't uh, just having that seat, okay, as a city councilor, okay, with that title. I've served Brockton since I first ran in 2013. I sat on the planning board and the zoning board. I was one of the few people sitting on that board that went to the um, the businesses or the homeowners locations um, during that time to where when I was able, when I had to talk on their, uh, uh, about their project, 
I was talking from being there and not just looking at the piece of paper and 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 uh and knowing the person you know in front of me and saying okay now everything's going to be good okay mm-hmm. I did the work I also fought for the people that were unknown to the people on the board you know so basically uh some of the new businesses and stuff that were coming before the boards I stuck up for them and made them because everyone needs a chance and so the thing is right now is that the reason why I did take the uh, the fourth highest vote total right behind the incumbents is because of the fact that the majority of the people that are, are the, that are voting know that Gary Keith was out there in the street. And I made a difference to a lot of the uh, homeowners, the, the residents and the businesses in Brockton. OK, the only thing I didn't have is the seat behind the table to where I had to pass it off uh, after helping them so so much. But I did. The, I walked the walk. So. The difference between me and some of the other ones basically is that I've been out here doing it and the rest of them have not been doing it. You know, um, the thing is, is that and I hate to say it, but, you know, something we're coming down close to the uh, to the final uh, election here, you know, and people need to know, you know, where have they been? You know, who really what are their reasons for running? I wasn't going to run this time, but I saw the people that were lining up to run. And if I didn't run, the thing is, is that I'm a resident also, just like you are. And the thing is, is that I know who these people are. I know them because I've been doing it for a while and I don't want them representing me. You people really shouldn't want them representing them. But like you said, a lot of people don't do their homework. Yeah, okay. That's a scary not, thing. Yeah. And I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect, but I know my heart is in the right place um, because I'm running again. Like I said, I ran before I ran on. This is my fifth time running. Okay. It's hard to unseat the incumbents, but if, if 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 this was a sports game, if you if you were playing on a sports team right now and you kept losing, you were on a losing team every time. As soon as you become a free agent, you're going, you're jumping ship, you know. So no one wants to lose. I didn't get into this race to lose a fifth time. I'm in this race because of the fact that I feel and I believe that Brockton deserves better, and I do believe that I'm the right person to do that. I'm not a. I when I sat on the planning board and the zoning board. I wasn't afraid to make those tough decisions, those tough votes. OK, I wasn't afraid to, to go outside of what everyone else was voting for, even if I was the lone person voting mm-hmm. in favor or against. OK. Don't just line yourself up with it and stuff. We don't need a rubber stamp. We've had that. You know, I, when are we going to get to a point to where Brockton says we're tired of the same old, same old? Because that's what we've been getting, you know, and it's us. We keep going up there. OK. We know that people have, you know, the ones that are in there, what they've done, but then we keep complaining. But yet when it's election time, we go right back to the polls and we vote for it all over again so we can complain for two more years, you know. And like I said, eventually people get tired. And I think they're starting to see that everything that I've been saying, everything that I've been doing is facts. So it's not what I'm saying. It's what I'm doing, you know. And I make no fake, I make no promises to anyone except for I'll be transparent. I'll be honest. You're going to know what's going on. If I'm sitting at the table as a city councilor, you're going to know what's going on. Not after we get uh, the money and we spend it and you ask, where did it go? You're going to know as it's going along. You're going to know that this is what we just got. And this is where they're proposing for this money to go. You know, this way here, what I want to do is I want to engage the citizens, right, to where they come to the meetings. See, we don't get engaged enough to where we don't know what's going on until after the fact. I want to make it interesting, okay? I want to get the word out there that we're having a a, a city council meeting. We're having a finance meeting, you know, and I want to get it out there in a way to where they I engage them and I get them to come to these meetings because, you know, when we get the people engaged and they start coming to these meetings and we hold our city officials, uh, we hold them accountable. OK, you're going to see Brockton change. You're going to see the changes that we've been crying for in this city. You know, let our cry for a change be a cry of joy, you know, and not complaining all the time. You know, we got a great city here, a great city. I want these neighborhoods. Our homes are beautiful. We have great people, you know. Yeah, every city that you go to, no matter what town or city you go to, has a small pocket of problems. We got ours, too. But you know something? No one's crawling through my windows at night. You know, no one's crawling through my windows at night. Um, 
you know, we can we can talk about the police. We can talk about all that stuff. Our police force isn't as bad as what some other towns are. OK, we don't have all these problems and we got some hidden gems. We have hidden gems here in Brockton. Right, we got DW just... Phil underutilized. We got two. We got two museums. We got three hospitals. You know, we got a great, great city. And back in the day, like I said, sometimes for you to go forward, you got to know where you came from. We got to go back and look at Brockton in his in his in his heyday. OK, Brockton. I grew up in Boston. I'll tell you something. We came to Brockton every weekend. Because this was the place to come to. Yeah, you know, yeah, same here. Yeah. I was growing up in yeah. Mission Hill. <laughs> yeah, I grew you up know? in Mission Hill. My dad moved us out here in '78. Yes, you know, you know? that was and that it was, was the, great. That was the MBTA Exodus. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All the MBTA <laughs> employees, man, they started buying houses out in Brockton, and that's, that's how right. it all. That's how it all started. Because, because the houses were affordable. Okay. And the first house, my brother moved to Brockton first. My oldest brother, Ronnie, like I said, I got another T alumni. And uh, he bought his first house for $90,000. Now that house is about $400,000, okay? And he's talking about a campy, okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, crazy. Um, it is. So we have a great city. We have great people. We have a melting pot. We have enough resources here to be self-sustaining. You know, and I want to see us put everything together to where Easton, Stoughton, Whitman, Abington, they are all coming to Brockton. You know, because to them, like we go to Boston, I want those towns to come to Brockton like it's Boston. They're coming it right happen. now for that legal marijuana. Like we like yeah. we talked about when we talked about this years ago at Prova, years ago, me and you were one of the few that was like, well, no, we need that tax revenue. They need to come here so people can because we knew that if they didn't get put in Brockton, they were gonna end up in Easton and all these right. surrounding towns just over the border, and they were gonna reap the benefits of that tax revenue. Or yep. terror and sure all will. of these spots are getting all that that revenue. And uh um, right. yeah, man, I applaud and it. We so, need it too. Yeah, we do. We do. So you talked about you. It, it, it's funny you mentioned you said you, you, when you were talking, you said I'm not perfect, and that's a that's a great little segue before we get out of here. But you talked about not being perfect, and we'll talk about the elephant in the room. Um, you had a little beef going back and forth with someone online. In my feeling, in that situation, one, it was a personal situation that shouldn't be brought into how you're going to serve the people. Number one. Number two, what somebody's financial background is is really nobody's business and it doesn't show right. that they wouldn't be able to run the city. Mayor Carpenter, in my in my in my opinion, Mayor Carpenter did a good job running the city. But he uh -huh. had his issues behind the scenes because he had a bad divorce where you know you right. almost lose a house and your house and, and people were saying, oh he's a bad guy. He's his house is getting okay. this and, and it was like, but that's out of his control. You know what I'm saying? That as long as he can focus my feeling is that if somebody can focus and run the city or help constituents who got them into office. If you can run that seat and still handle whatever problems you have while not making it public, I feel you're a, a good person suited for the job. I felt that whole thing that I saw on, on, on social media was real petty. I felt like it should have just stayed in the courts or whatever, because that right. doesn't define the person who's running in my book. Thank you. And if you want to and speak I'm gonna, on that. And, and I do, you know, without going too in depth on it, because as you see, yeah, you never exactly. see me really answer that person yeah, there. Yep. Yeah. There's two sides to every story, and and some people say there's three sides to every story because it's his side, my side, and then the truth. Okay. Like I said, I'm not perfect. Okay. Um. And like you said, and it and it did get petty. You know. First of all, this could have been resolved a long time ago if the person was righteous. Okay, and wanting to deal with it. Okay. Um, privilege, okay? People that feel that they're privileged acted in a way to where you're not going to talk down to me, you're not going to do something, and you're definitely not going to lie on me, okay? Mm -hmm. But the matter of the, I'm going to just put it to you like this, uh, Keith, this whole thing came off of an assault and battery that I did not file charges on, okay? Because a person, when I was renting, actually came into my house, okay? The assistant came into my house and put hands on my wife, okay? Now, like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into it, right, but, right, but right. When, when you touch my wife, first of all, all cards are off the table, 
Okay, all cards are off the table. And the thing is, is that when I brought it to this person's attention, okay, all he want, he didn't even want to hear that or, or, or try to handle the matter that his assistant created, okay? But on top of all that, I'm just telling you, the weather was really bad that year, right? There wasn't nothing like what he's talking about and stuff, right? He got in there. I was not able to make it because of the snow that year. And because the court is more owner friendly, you know, landlord friendly, he was able to lie his way through. He knew the people there and everything. And you know something, the thing is, is that, so I had no leg to stand on, but at the same time, I tried working with him throughout the way, but you know something, you you can't talk to me any way you want to. You can't, there was no damage to that property. And I'll tell you, I'll leave it on this note right here. I moved out, okay, probably on a, I'm gonna say off the top of my head, a Saturday or a Sunday. He had new people in that house by Thursday. Come on now. Mm. Okay. Come on mm. now. Okay. Mm. And the whole time I was there because of the weather, which is why I ended up staying more saying that I, I owed, you know, back rent. I stayed away because the weather it was that year that we had so much snow, kept snowing like every three days. Yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah. I, remember okay. that, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't get a U-Haul truck up in there and everything. He wasn't trying to help me clear this space or whatever, you know, to do that. And and his whole thing to me, he came through. He did a walkthrough with me, first of all. And the whole time at that point there, like I said, he kept telling me, Gary, I need you. I know I got this place rented already. I got this place rented already. So if there was damage, uh, Keith, come on now. Right. You right. wouldn't have been. You, you wouldn't have had the people like, in that fast. Right. right. So people, what people, you know, people want to get into, you know, that social media and they want to, you know, trash me because they didn't hear my story because they, this man doesn't live in Brockton. Okay. Uh, none of that. But the thing is, is that it was totally a lie. And, uh, you know, but the thing is, is that you got a judgment, take it up in the court. I'll take it up in the court. You know, I'm here. I'll take it up in the court. But like you said, it has no bearing on me being a good city counselor. You know, exactly. I've been out here doing the work and I don't let, you know, uh, I don't, first of all, I'm, t I'm tough skin. Okay. I let things roll off my back. I'm tough skin. You know, I've been hearing this, but how come it only services every two years when I'm getting ready to run for office? <laughs> okay. Every two years he comes back. Now, here's the thing. If you're a landlord, first of all, let's say I was, let's say I was behind on my rent and we had to part ways. Homeowners, landlords, know that that is a reality when you first buy rental property, okay? you There's going to come a time to where you might take a short, you know? But you don't turn around and act like this guy is doing. Right. You know? Right. right. Every right. two years. You ain't doing one thing, but you try to. As soon as they, as soon as <clears throat> my name comes up that I'm running for office to represent he us, brings, Yeah, yeah. Okay? And let's say I was the best thing that was going to happen to Brockton as far as representing Brockton. <laughs> Here comes this guy, you know? And uh, and that's uh, to me, to me that says a lot about that the character of that man. Right. Okay. Right. And it, the way you can't even do what you want to do. Right. You know, you up here trying to trash my character. Okay. And 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 but no one knows who you are. And that's the so, thing with some of these some you know some of these people. But like I said, I had to mention that I had to bring it up because you mentioned you mentioned yourself that you weren't perfect. Right. I'm like, you know what? This is a good segue to just ask him about yeah. it. It was either you were gonna answer, you were gonna say, Oh, I don't wanna answer but I, I commend your yeah. answer. And you know no, what? I, I hope that kind of just paints another picture for people to, to decide if they want to vote for you. I think that's a that, you know, coming yeah. be, again, that's being transparent. It is being transparent. You know something? I've rented, you know, with seven kids, right? I you know, it took me a while before I actually owned my home. Okay, with seven kids, I got, listen, I get campaign donations from most of the people that I've actually rented from in the past. Okay, two of them. Okay, they support my campaign. Okay, and one, I was behind on my rent with when we potted ways. And guess what? I paid him after I moved. Okay, I paid that man. And now that same person, and he's well known throughout Brockton, well known, um, you know, rental property all over the place supports my campaign every time i run he donates to my campaign what does that tell you about my character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly so man we had you on for 45 minutes this is crazy i you know most of the most of the people that i've had running you know but we, we like i said we had some good topics that had to that had to have you speak on especially with the two in brockton um but i gotta get ready to get you out of here and take okay, a break sure. um but let them know 
how to follow you and what you got going on before we head into this election, I believe is on November 2nd. Yes. Well, right now, basically, um, we just had our last fundraiser where we're, 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 we're just knocking on doors still. And um, basically all I'm asking everyone to do is to go out, support my candidacy to be a next city council at large. I, I'm going to give you exactly what you deserve. Okay. Brockton deserves better than what it's been getting. And I'm telling you, I've been out here. I'm a proven commodity since 2013 of doing what I say I, I need to do. Serving on the planning board, serving on the zoning board, serving our country as a U.S. Army veteran, serving my family that I've been married for 35 years and being with my wife for 38 years, um, helping the residents uh, and the businesses of Brockton. There's a lot of people running and some people, you know, no one knows what's in someone else's heart, but I know what's in mine. OK, and I proved that already. So um, no one else has running besides the incumbents have ever served Brockton. So I'm asking you to send me to City Hall to be your next city councilor at large. I guarantee you I will not let you down. Again, my name is Gary Keith Sr. I'm going to be the sixth name on the ballot. And as far as getting in touch with me, um, my email is gman02301 at yahoo.com. And I'm also on Facebook as Gary Keith Sr. Councilor at large. Nice. Good way to segue out. We're gonna, hey, we're going to take a quick break, guys. We're going to be back with more booth after this. It's your boy, Sinister One, broadcast live from the City of Champions. We're here on hoobazoo.com and hatchetradio.com. We're going to be right back, and I'll be getting into more of the booth after this. Thank you. <gasps> Roddy, come on out from under there. No! Come on. I saw a monster in the closet. There is no such thing as monsters. But I saw it. Jeff, could you come up here? Okay, pal, it's time for bed. There's no such thing as monsters. All right, your boy, since we're broadcasting live from the City of Champions, you are listening to The Booth, and I got to thank my guy, Gary Keith, for coming on, hanging out with us. It was a good, good interview. We actually went, we actually went way over um, with this interview with him. Uh, we went 45 minutes, people. 45 minutes we went on this one, um, and I just got to say, man. It was a good interview. Good stuff. Um, and I like getting kudos afterwards. Um, this is why I wish to have more politicians come on this show so we can keep it open and transparent and let them come on and <clears throat> let people do what they need to do. Hey, guys, everybody, Mark Powers, thank you for watching the show. Kevin Jeffries, Ron Drago, Dave Haggerty, um, everybody out there. I see Matt. What's going on, Matty? is this in my chat white supremacists jumping into okay so here's the deal people <laughs> uh, here's the deal people so if you're watching the show on my facebook page right now if you're watching the show live on facebook we've got a white supremacist leaving comments on our youtube page right effing now 7 40 p.m Kill all black people. I hope they all burn in hell. Burn, fire, fire. Now, as you guys were here watching the show go out, those were actually coming up. And um, look, look here. 
you just I don't know who you are or who just posted to my page like this but Lord have mercy on your soul cuz I'm coming for you I'm coming for you you can hide behind your keyboard warrior ass but I'm going through YouTube and I'm coming for you and I'll find out your account and I'm pretty sure if you're watching the show and you live in the Brockton area because you're probably watching the show because you live in the Brockton area. Don't let me find you. Because charges will be pressed. I will be all over it. All over it. So smart ass. You want to you wanna post some bullshit like that on my page? Some racist bullshit like that? In your feelings? This isn't the first time. This isn't the first time. Coming at me like this. Okay? Y'all, y'all didn't... You, whoever you are, you didn't stir up some shit right now. Because you didn't piss me the fuck off. And excuse my language, but I'm just letting people know right now, I don't tolerate racism. I don't care who you are. You can post whatever you want. You don't scare me. Because I know one thing. I'm a ninja with knowledge. You want to fuck with me? I'm a ninja with knowledge. I'm smart. I'm dangerous. I'm a ninja with an education. That's what I am to you. Okay, so you want to come on my page and drop some low-life comments like that, some racist low-life comments like that? You're beneath me, bro. You're beneath me. You're a shit on the bottom of my foot that I'm going to scrape off because you mean nothing to me. Okay? I was one of the first kids bust out of Boston to Brighton, while all these other people were going to Hyde Park and South Boston, where middle class and middle class were there. I was bused to Brighton, Mass. You know what that was like? Being bused, the first black student to Brighton and Chestnut Hill, where already it wasn't just about color. It was also the fact that I was a low middle class black kid from Boston going into Brighton, Chestnut Hill where it was high class people had the military and national guard escorting my buses to school, six black kids from the city of Boston going to Brighton to be bused, to have our bus have rocks thrown at it, shit thrown at it, go to school with white kids, become friends with them, come out of school to get on the bus and have their parents grab their kids away and say, I don't want you talking to that nigger. Bro, you can't hurt me with your words. So you want to post this shit on Facebook? You want to post this shit on YouTube on my show? Or oh, I'll come for you. I'm going to come for you. You didn't, you didn't unleash the beast, boy. Bro. Screenshots and everything. So take heed, any of you white supremacists or whoever you are. If you're in Brockton and you're posting that shit on my page, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you on the legal level. I will shut your shit down. I will expose you. Let me find out who you are, because I will expose you. Bring it. I don't give a fuck. Real. I'm not playing that. That shit. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Support me right now. Dave Haggerty, Mark Powers, Tyrone Washington, B. Marie, Custom Behavior. Damn right. I Snapchatted that shit. I Snapchatted that shit. And you know what? I'm going on Facebook right now. And I'm putting a friggin' post up right now so people will know. You know what? I'm not playing this shit. I'll be coming for you. Trust and believe me. Please don't be in the city of Brockton. Please don't be in the city of Brockton. Oh, man, because I'm going to expose your ass. And don't be a business owner. Oh! Don't be a business owner in the city of Brockton and be posting that bullshit on my YouTube page. That racist bullshit, cause oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a burn your shit down, <laughs> and I'm not talking about literally burn your shit down. I'm gonna make sure you're exposed on Facebook, and I'm gonna make sure your business is done. Benito, trust and believe me. Like I said, you want to call the N word out? You want to put it out there? I'm a ninja with knowledge, buddy. I'm a ninja with knowledge. The most dangerous man in the room. The most dangerous ninja in the room. Come for me. 
Trust and believe me. Getting into the news booth. <laughs> Woman charged with filing a false report claiming she found a child off of I-95. <laughs> Daniela Preza Lemus was charged with filing a false claim <laughs> that she found this young boy wandering on I-95. They took pictures of the boy. Come to find out that Daniela was the babysitter for this kid. And the person who she was babysitting for it didn't come back on time. So instead of just calling or leaving the baby with someone else, she comes up with this crazy story that she found the kid on I-95 and puts in a false report. Are you that? Are people really this stupid out there? I, look at her face. Like, like, damn, I didn't get away with this. No, we didn't get away with this. No, like, <laughs> Oh my God, really? <laughs> oh, also in the news booth. Wait, hold up. They've been telling us for years, take aspirin. Us older guys and middle-aged guys, they were telling us, take aspirin. It prevents heart attacks, prevents strokes. <laughs> the FDA is now telling us that taking aspirin every day does not prevent heart attacks. It's actually hurting certain people with certain conditions. And now they're telling people to not take any type of aspirins <laughs> on a daily basis. So this is why I hate to say it, this is why we have the situation that we have right now with the FDA and the vaccinations and vaccines and things of that sort, because here we go. You're told that this is safe. And then I don't know how long has it been that they've been telling people to take an aspirin every day to protect, prevent this. I want to say it's been like 15, maybe 18 years. They've been telling people this. Here we are 18 years later and they're telling you, oh, stop, <laughs> don't. So this is why, oh man, I'm going to be a whole new, I'm look, people, I'm just going to be a whole different energy level for the rest of this show. I'm just telling y'all, tell your friends, share the link to this show right now because they're about to probably see some stuff that they probably, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, also in the news booth, uh, hold on here. I don't know why that story didn't come up. Oh, there it is. Uh, Naval nuclear engineer and his wife were arrested for trying to sell submarine secrets. Secrets. They were trying to sell nuclear propulsion systems information to a foreign country. Turns out that they were selling it to an FBI agent. And um, they actually had to show up in court today. Today was the day that they actually had to show up in court it's kind of a scary story because, you know, this is just one naval nuclear engineer. You know, how many others have you know, done this you know, that's in the military? It, it, it's just a scary thought. Scary thought. Uh, heading into the legal booth, Capitol Riot judge speaks out and says that uh, we're being a little too lenient on some of these people who were charged in the January 6th riots. Now, if you guys watched the show last week and saw R Squared and Ken Diesel break this down, um, they both said this. They both said the judges are really paying attention to these cases and they want to make sure that people just aren't cutting the easy deal so they can just walk away. And this judge right here, he's saying that some of these people, they don't realize the magnitude of the crime they committed. All they want to do is just get, get this out of their hair and move on with their lives. And he's saying that, no, we need to start really sending a message with some of these people with the Capitol rioters, um, from January 6th. So we're going to see, um, Mitchell McKinnon just said, hey, Keith, what's up? Yeah, what's up, Mitchell? I'm kind of fired up right now. I don't like racist people writing on my shit. That's, that's how I feel right now. So what's going on, Mitchell? Thank you for coming, watching the show, and getting on here. Um, McDonald's McFlurry machine is broken again, and now the Federal Trade Commission is on to it. This is going to go to a legal status. So here's the funny thing, people. We've been talking about the fact that when you go to McDonald's and the, and the McFlurry machine is always, for some reason, broken. And people always wondered. And then what happened was, was TikTok came around and people started putting trade secrets on TikTok. And some kid who worked for McDonald's put the secret out there. He said that lots of times when you go to McDonald's and if the, the McFlurry machine is broken, it's not really broken. The truth of the matter is, is that when you go to McDonald's and the McFlurry machine isn't working, it's because it hasn't been serviced or cleaned. Why? Because 
the McFlurry machine machine is contracted to a third party vendor. And that third party vendor is the only company that can handle servicing the McFlurry machine. In other words, coming out, cleaning it, making sure it's running properly and all of that stuff. Kind of do like a kind of a, a machine PM on it. Um, so now there's an issue about monopolization and things of that sort, because this company is the only company. They are the only company that can fix or service the machines. So you think about how many McDonald's are out there. And if you've locked down this one contract, imagine how much money who I got. I need to know who owns the company. I need to know. Cause first of all, you're slacking. If you're not getting around and getting the machines fixed, you're not making, you're not making good on your contract, bro. You got to get these machines fixed. You need to hire some employees and get the McFlurry machine service, bro. Cause if you got the contract to every McDonald's in the country, man, imagine the money they must, they could make or, or making, you know, it's just a crazy, crazy story. So pass it along. Cause a lot of people didn't know that, but this is, this is why the truth of why the McFlurry machine is broken. Most of the time when you go, um, heading into the entertainment booth, boom, all y'all know me. I'm a big Godzilla fan. Godzilla turns 67 this week and Toho films is releasing Godzilla. The original Godzilla film, Ojira with Raymond Burr from 1954. I believe it was in 4k remastered. And you know, some people will laugh and say, why would you want to see? Look, I am a Godzilla fanatic. I am a movie buff. I would love to see Godzilla in 4K. So I'm looking to see because it's only in limited cinemas and theaters. Um, I'm hoping cool, uh, Coolidge Corner is one of the places that might be showing it. Um, I would love to see Godzilla in 4K remastered. I'm sorry. I just, there's a, there's a few, there's a few black and white old school movies that I think I would love to see in 4K. Um, any of the, the monster films, um, the werewolf, Dracula, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, all of all of those, I would love to see those in 4K remastered. Um, if you're talking black and white, something else that I'd like to see in 4K remastered. I was a huge Abbott and Costello fan. I would love to see Abbott and Costello um, remastered in 4K. I I just you know, and people would say, well, what 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 what's the big deal of seeing black and white in 4K? I'm pretty sure. Seeing something in, in 4K in black and white, I think you're still going to see some things that you aren't going to see um, that you didn't see with the, with the, with the, with the naked eye. I, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. So um, let's see. Let's see. Guys, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Joseph, you need to be mayor of Boston. Joe, thank you for your support. Like I said, I'm, I'm pissed right now. <laughs> oh, I'm pissed. Um, John Bernthal. So here's the deal. John Bernthal was rumored to be the next Wolverine in the MCU when they unveiled the X-Men. Um, John put that rumor right to rest and hit us with some news that I'm like, yo, <laughs> that's the best bad news, good news that I've ever got because I felt that John would have been a good Logan, a good, a good Wolverine. I thought, man, yeah, he would be a good one. But he said, look, I'm not going back to the MCU unless I get to play that Punisher character. Frank Castle, he said that that character is embedded in his soul. He loves playing that character so much that he says if if they're bringing Marvel to the MCU, he's there. He doesn't want to play Wolverine. He don't want to play anybody else. He wants to be Punisher. And if that's the case, he'll probably debut um, somewhere in the MCU when they do a, a, a crossover or something. It, it's it's got to be coming. So keep your hands up for that. All right. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, guys, ladies, gentlemen, um, the trailer was just released for the brand new screen comes out in 2022, January. And you know, you release this trailer in the month of October when we've got the return of Halloween. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, yeah, he does. He does kill the pun that yo, I, if I could have put, I, if I had more time, I would have put up the fight scene. Uh, between the Punisher and the and the convicts in the jail walkway in the corridor. Um, for those of you who haven't seen any of the Marvel shows on Netflix, one of the things about the Marvel Netflix shows 
was that they were gritty, dirty, dark, but the fight scene choreography in all four of the shows, all five, six of the shows, all six of the shows, um, the fight choreography was just simply amazing. I don't know how the hell they didn't receive an Emmy, but Daredevil fight choreography was amazing. Um, if you guys haven't seen The Punisher at all, there's a scene where The Punisher is being uh, tested by the Kingpin, and he has to fight some convicts who are getting released from their cells. And it has got to be one of the most brutal fight scenes in streaming television. Um, that just was like, bro, I can't, first of all, I couldn't believe that this was Marvel. <laughs> I couldn't believe that, th that I was watching a Marvel show because it is brutal. So if you haven't seen it, if you haven't watched the Punisher, um, look it up, look up Punisher fight in, in jail cell. And then the Punisher's fight with the Kingpin alone was just a great fight. So I'm going to get you guys on. Here's the trailer for Scream. And then I got the trailer to remind you guys that it opens this week, Halloween. Here we go with Scream. Would you like to play a game, Tara? <laughs> doors unlocked. All doors locked. Doors unlocked. Three attacks so far. Do you have a gun? I'm Sydney Prescott. Of course I have a gun. Something about this one just feels different. Samantha? I'm... I know who you are. I've been through this. A lot. This is your life now, which means that whoever this is is gonna keep coming for you. You ready? For this? Never. There are certain rules to surviving. The attacks were all on people related to the original killers. Whatever his link is to our past, it's pulled us all back here. And I won't sleep until he's in the ground. running. Evil dies tonight. Oh, the door. 
I'm not just gonna sit and watch another innocent person die. If you track Michael's victim, that's a straight line to Michael's childhood home. What do we do? We fight. Let's hunt him down. Michael Myers is flesh and blood. But a man couldn't have survived that fire. The more he kills, the more he transcends. Run! Go home now! He's the essence of evil. We're back here in the booth broadcasting live from the City of Champions. And that was the trailer for Scream and Halloween Kills, which opens up this week. Look, <laughs> the Scream mask and Michael Myers, the shape mask are two of the most iconic Halloween slasher killers, serial killers, right there with Jason, right there with Freddy Krueger. And the fact that these two are back on the big screen I'm excited. I am excited. And um, I can't wait to see both of these films. I actually got to see Black Widow finally uh, this week and check, was able to check that out. But um, yeah, I'm excited and ecstatic. Scream opens up in January. Looks like the whole cast is there um, on this show. So I, I, can't, I can't wait. I'm ecstatic. Uh, let's move on here into the sports booth. Patriots came back to beat the Texans on the road. <laughs> and of course, in typical Bill Belichick fashion, um, they came back from behind and they won the game 25-22 on a um, field goal by Nick Folk with 16 seconds to go. Um, Belichick, of course, you know, they win the game and, you know, they, you're looking for all this praise. And he was like, look, it wasn't perfect. Um... It should never come to that. You know how Bill is. Bill, Bill beats you up. You could, they could have won that game thirty to three, and Bill would have found some way to get these guys ready for next week. The reason, and, and a lot of people are gonna say, "Well, Bill's an asshole." You know, Bill's this, Bill's that. Nah, Bill is a smart dude. Bill is a smart dude. You know why? Because they beat the Texans. He don't want his guys getting their heads bloated. Because Dallas is coming to town next week. The Cowboys are coming, and Dak Prescott is playing on a whole nother level. Because right now, the way Tom Brady and Dak Prescott are playing, we might just see these guys in the NFC Championship game. Dallas and Tampa Bay, because they're balling right now. Uh, Brady threw like five touchdowns. He threw for over 411 yards in their victory. Yes, and, and it was just craziness. So, um... Let's see what happens here. I'm 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 ecstatic. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Um I can't <laughs> so um but yeah, he, he doesn't give them any chance to rest because he knows Dallas is coming to town and it's no easy task, especially we don't have Gilmore. Um he shipped him off to the Panthers for a six round pick. To me, that just says he's damaged goods. You give up a thirty year old pro bowler. For a six-round pick in 2023, lets me know that he's damaged goods. He may not have recovered from this uh, pec surgery or whatever surgery he had. So let's move on. <laughs> Ooh, Red Sox. I talked about this past weekend. <laughs> oh, man. This weekend, we had the marathon. We had the Patriots game. <clears throat> we had the ALDS Red Sox game. So the Red Sox beat the Yankees in the one-game playoff game to get the rights to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. And everybody, pretty much everybody, had written the Red Sox off. Um, the series started down in Tampa Bay with two games. Tampa Bay comes out. They whoop the Red Sox in game one. They even stole home plate. The, the player who actually stole home plate actually hit a home run. He hit a home run, and then later in the game, he stole home plate. They was eating popcorn dancing down there in Tampa Bay. And it's obvious Tampa Bay didn't get the memo. 
that New York got. You can't inspire Boston. You can't inspire Fenway Park. You can't sit there and be like the Yankees and put on the New York Post, Boston sucks, before coming here for a one playoff game. Because that's what New York did. They put that in their paper, and you know what that did? That inspired the team, and Fenway Park was like it's never been in almost 15 years, for Christ's sake. So now Tampa Bay, they take home game one, and pretty much crap all over the Red Sox. Game two happens, and man, Red Sox take the win. Game three, we have this, and are you serious? Tie game, like the 13th, getting ready to go in the 14th inning. Christian Velasquez, the catcher, the catcher is coming to the plate, and <laughs> this is crazy, because listen to the announcers in this are you serious as the Red Sox take that second game away from Tampa Bay. Here it is. There have been seven walk-off homers by a catcher in postseason history. Do I hear number eight? Red Sox win it! Christian Vasquez doing his Carlton fist! That was right up there with shades of Carlton Fisk. That, that, these two last games are truly epic moments. Um, actually, I don't need my earpieces. Um, epic true moments, true, true moments in Boston Red Sox history. And then they did it again last night. P.K. Hernandez hits a home run to take the win last night. And now they'll move on to the ALCS where they will be taking on either the Chicago White Sox or the Houston Astros. Right now, the Red Sox are smoking red hot. If I'm the Chicago White Sox or the Houston Astros right now, I'm scared. You don't want to be hitting a team that's peaking at this time like this. That's, that's some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So again, congrats to the Red Sox. They will face the Astros or the White Sox in the ALCS. Um, in this next series, and if they take this, they on to the World Series. So, uh, in local news also here, Cage Titans announced the 50th event from Cage Titans. It's going to be a double header. It's going to be a day card that begins at 1230, and then a night card, which will begin around, doors will break around 6, 630. Uh, it's supposed to kick off at 730. Mike Paul Bear, um, I actually spoke with him. I'm going to try to get him on this show to talk about this event in two weeks. So I'm just teasing this, but get ready for Cage Titans, the double header. I can't, I can't wait. It is a, it's going to be a first ever, and um, I, I can't wait. This is just insane, insane. So I want to make sure you guys come out and check out that one because um, it's going to be crazy. Also, uh, Daniel Jones was shaken up after a hit against the Cowboys. The Cowboys game this week. Um, for those of you who have been watching concussions and thinking that it's, you know, not a serious thing, um, take a look at this real quick on Are You Serious? This is why we need to protect these players. They've got all these things in place, and still, this happens. Um, really scary to watch. Um, I'm just giving you guys a warning. Here we go. Here is Jones going to take it, and... Didn't get it. He might be hurt. Jabril Cox made the tackle. And 
Jones slow getting up. The rookie from LSU made that stop helmet to helmet. Well, now with the stoppage of the play, he'll have to come out of the game if they are going oh, for it. No. Oh, man. Oh. Wow. And that'll be seen upstairs. Mike Glennon is the backup quarterback for the Giants. We'll see him on a fourth and goal play for the Giants trailing by seven. Remember that movie Friday when Ice Cube was talking to his... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, Dave Haggerty, Astros won today. Yes, yes. So that means the Red Sox will be taking on the Astros. Mitchell McKinnon says, The city that never sleeps definitely got put to sleep. <laughs> Hell yeah. You're right. So remember the movie Friday when Ice Cube goes into the bathroom to talk to his dad and his dad asks him, Craig, how the hell you get fired on your day off? Well, that would be... Mr. John Gruden, head coach of the Raiders, <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders. How the hell do you get fired on your day off? <laughs> Monday night. And it's crazy how this whole thing went down. You know, we're all sitting here watching the Baltimore Ravens take on the Colts in this bloodbath of a game. All of a sudden, this little report comes out about the NFL doing this investigation on the Washington football team. And while they were investigating the Washington football team, they came across some emails from John Gruden going all the way back to 2011, where he called Roger Goodell the, the F word. He's calling people the N word. And you know something? With cancel culture right now, the good old boy network is about to take a hit. All your past misdealings are coming to light. And look, this ain't over, people. This ain't over because by halftime, John Gruden, he had a visit and he was already giving his resignation. Somebody said, well, he didn't get fired, Keith. He resigned. Come on now. We know what happens when coaches resign under these situations. You save face and you resign so we don't have to fire you. And then he gave that BS statement that they always give. You know, John Gruden, to be honest, he always came off to me as a good, good old boy. To be honest. I felt like he was one of those good old boy types, you know, just by the way he carried himself, the way he talked. I just kind of, I kind of felt that way, but I didn't have any proof, but he's gone. And the good old boy network is on notice because whomever he was sending these in, in, in emails to and stuff and talking about this, it's going to expose a lot of people. Remember again, like I said, this stuff came out because they were investigating the Washington football team. So Dan Snyder and those people there they're not, they're not clean yet. This could get ugly. When you talk about the flake gate and you talk about spy gate. Well, we got racist gate. <laughs> we got racist gate. That's about to happen. And John Gruden's at the beginning of the list. Good old boy network coming to an end. And let's see what happens here. This is going to get real interesting, real interesting. Let's get into the Biden bombshells. Before we close out the show. And Maddie, Maddie, I see Maddie Cameron. Um, I don't know if he's airing the show with um Tommy Morrison's son, Trey LeBay Morrison. Um, he did an interview with Tommy Morrison, the boxer's son. I'm not sure if it's airing tonight at 8 30, so I gotta find out. Because if so, I want, I want to make sure everybody turns in. Buy them bombshells. Uh Pentagon Security Software Chief stepped down, claiming that the US cybersecurity is kindergarten. <laughs> And no match against China in cyber capabilities. Look, I know this. I know in what's going on right now behind the scenes, cyber warfare. There is a cyber war going on that you guys don't know about. I'm an internet guy. I love my internet stuff. Um, 
but the cyber war is big behind the scenes. And right now, the U.S. is getting their asses kicked by China. They're getting their asses kicked by Korea. They're getting their asses kicked by Russia. We are we are at the bottom of the cybersecurity. We are we're, people are ignorant because. And you know why we're ignorant and why we're at the bottom of the list? Because we still got people out here whose cell phones and passwords are one, two, three, four. We're ignorant. We, 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 we are ignorant to cybersecurity. I have people, look, I have people who call me about stuff on their phones and stuff on their computers. And the first thing I ask them is, oh, what's your password? Or what's this, right? And I go to help them out and then they say, oh, this is my password. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I could find that out by just going on your Facebook page. <laughs> For real, though. Uh, Biden's proposal to empire the IRS rattles banks and their customers. Joe Biden, this isn't a good look. Um, the IRS is saying that they need to get access to people's accounts so they know who's doing shisty stuff when filing taxes and who's not paying the right amount of taxes. Um, Biden has proposed that they can look at accounts that start at 600 with a $600 balance. Look, somebody who has just a measly $600 balance isn't ripping the government off in taxes. Okay? Let's let's up that to about maybe 10 grand, 10 grand. Anybody anybody with 10 grand or more or 20 grand or more, then maybe we can subject them to IRS checks. But $600, you're just going to hurt the little guy, the little people. You're hurting kids accounts, which usually carries like 500 or less. Come on now, Biden. Let's go. Real. Be good. Do what you need to do. And this is something that I just talked about with Mr. Gary Keith as we come on. I, I love politics. I know politics. You know, I do what I need to do when it comes time for politics. But um, I'm tired of the spin. Joe Biden, you got in the office, felt things might go differently. But guess what? We're 10 months into this thing. And it's the same old, same old political BS spin that you guys try to pull on the misinformed and those who don't know crap about politics. Biden, Joe Biden and the White House put out this statement yesterday. Before President Biden took office, jobs were down and unemployment was skyrocketing. At only eight months into his presidency, here are the three points. Joe Biden, the White House says, the economy has created five million jobs. Really? Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my gosh. Stop f***ing lying. Stop lying. The economy hasn't created 5 million jobs. The pandemic is coming to an end and people are going back to work because you've cut the unemployment benefits and things are opening back up. Those 5 minute jobs... Those jobs... Oh, hold on here. Let me get this back open. You guys lost me here on camera. Those jobs <laughs> are, are people going back to work. So let's stop it. The second thing that you guys put out here. Let's look at number two. Number two, unemployment claims are down 60%. Joe Biden in the White House put out yesterday. Unemployment claims are down 60%. Really? Why the f*** you lying? Why? Why you always lying? Why you lying? Unemployment claims are down because people got off of unemployment because you cut the bennies. And people are going back to work because everything opened back up. This has absolutely nothing to do about you. And your policy, it has to do with the pandemic winding down and people going back to work. Number three, number three, long-term unemployment has had the largest three-month decline since 1948. Three-month decline. Hmm. What happened in the last three months, Mr. Biden, in the White House? Oh, my gosh. Stop f***ing lying. Stop lying three months ago shit opened back up people were going back to work all of this stuff has to do with the pandemic winding down it has nothing to do with your policies or anything of that sort so stop 
lying, Joe Biden, in the White House. This is why I'm pissed, because it's the same rhetoric over and over and over again, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the middle class carries everybody else on their fucking backs. Because you Democrats and friggin' Republicans keep doing this bullshit to us. And it's sad because anybody who doesn't follow politics and, and, and they're misinformed, they're looking at this shit on social media and they're falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker. And they're going to say, oh, President Biden did this and did that. And I'm going to be arguing with these people. I'm going to be arguing with these people and telling them, no, you're wrong. That's not what's going on here. This is all, again, this is spin. This is bullshit spin. And if you know anything about politics, this is exactly what's going on. And it's a scary thing because there's more misinformed people than there are informed when it comes to politics. That's the sad thing about this. The White House... Joe Biden, clean it up. Stop stop all this stuff, man. Because I don't want to have to come on here next week and have to play this clip. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God. Stop f***ing lying. I don't want to play that. I don't want to be that guy, Joe Biden. And then I'll have all these people talking about I'm a Joe Biden hater and be in my messages, in my inbox, and posting crap about that. For real, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, give America what the hell we want. Stop this bullshit. Piss, yo. I told y'all. Told y'all. This dude that posts that racist shit on my page, he got me fired up, yo. Got me fired up. Look at this. And then Joe, this is what it, this is what Joe Biden put. But we have more work to do. I'm gonna keep working every day to build back better American. Better for the American people. Good. Good, Joe. I want to see that. I want to see that. Because, again, if you all put some stuff out there like you just did yesterday, this is coming for you. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh, my God. Stop f***ing lying. No mercy. <laughs> No mercy. I'm not having mercy. I'm tired of this. All right. So guys, I got to get out of here. 830 is here. And I'm not sure if Matty C has his show tonight because uh, he's got Trey Lippe Morrison, son of Tommy Morrison. So I got to blow through here right now. Sinister One Production Beanies. I'm trying to get those back. Thanks for everybody who bought the Sinister One Beanies. Hanging out with me. Also check out the podcast that I'm involved with, with production and also, you know, co-creating Oscar Mike Radio. Big up again. And Oscar Mike Radio, hey, I didn't forget you, bro. I didn't forget you. That right there is my Oscar Mike Radio hat. And and I told Travis I would wear this hat every day on the air, and I'm on every Tuesday to show support of him and his knee rehab because he, he you know he tore his patella and, and messed up his knee. But I have a pit bull named Jupy, who if you leave baseball caps around. They become damaged goods like Stefan Gilmore. So I got to order a new Oscar Mike radio hat because my dog Jupy knows I'm talking about her. Got a hold of my hat and chewed it. Not that she just chewed up the hat. She must have liked Travis or something because she chewed the patch right off the hat. Chewed the patch right off the hat. So again, check out the podcast. Maddie C sports for you and me. Happy hour with Lito. Featuring Kevin Jeffries. Also, Talk Back with Gloria Shea. She got George C. Frazier coming on October 23rd. Dr. George C. Frazier. And she's also got a play out there that she's taking auditions for. Sugar the Play. I'm going to try to work her promo into the show next week. Uh, also, got to talk about my man right here. Mr. Melodic. You guys have seen him on this show. He's got a big show coming up this Friday night in at the Strand in Rhode Island. He's opening up for the Locks. Jada Kiss and the Locks are coming to Rhode Island. Melodic is opening up. Check it out right there. Grab those tickets. Mention Melodic. Call that number. Mention Melodic so he gets what he needs to get from you guys and go from there. And check out the show. I think I'm going to try to make it down there. Also, again, as I mentioned, Cage Titans 50 is coming up. We're going to be on to that one right there. Cage Titans 50 is huge. 
I can't wait for that. That's it right here. November 6th, back to back. A day event and then a night event. It's the first time anybody's ever done something of that sort in Massachusetts. A doom. And like I said, Mike, I'm going to try to get Mike on the show to talk about this event. And um, we'll go from there. Also, Operation Home. Operation Hope for the home front. That's me DJing this event. It's coming up next. Uh, it's November 20th. Uh, I'll be DJing this event. $22 at the door. It goes for a good cause. It's going to veterans suffering from PTSD and traumatic brain injury. And uh, you want to make sure you guys come on down. Check that out. I'll be DJing this event. It's going to be a nice event. I think Travis Prodding is going to be down there. So make sure to come down. Operation Hope on the home front. November 20th uh, at the Whitman VFW. Guys, I got to get out of here. Get this show off the air. And I apologize for the racist BS that you were all subjected to on my page on YouTube. Um, there's no place for racism in this society. And again, I get it. I get it why you came on my show. Because I'm a ninja with knowledge. I'm a ninja with knowledge. And I scare you. I scare you. I know I scare you. Or else you wouldn't have been on my Facebook page or my YouTube page posting all that racist crap. So, like I said, I've already reported you. And if I find out you're in the city of Brockton and find out you're from the city of Brockton and if you own a business, I'm coming for you because I'm going to expose you. So, guys, I got to get out of here. Sorry about ranting. I'm a little pissed off, but I brought that energy to a positive fashion to kick this ass of the show tonight. <laughs> And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And um, hey, SpongeBob, can you do me a favor? Take me home. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening to The Booth on Hoobazoo and HatcherRadio.com. Please follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. The Booth is a Sinister One production hosted by Sinister One. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here, and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I smoke, I drink, I do my thing. These bitches hating, so you know I got to make it plain. Don't do cocaine with your chick, my main. We stick together, true forever, yeah, you know we bang. I miss those days, which was easy. If only I made it, bitch, no repeat. Now that I done upgraded, I've been upstate, and y'all think I'm playing. And I gotta hit now for these weak ass hoes who think I ain't slaying. Try me, try me, and I'll probably end up laughing, cause I never back down. I'm that chick with a clean ass whip. I don't need that shit, it's like I'm my own now. I get hurt, I get tired of fuss and fighting, guess I gotta crack down. Don't mess with me, cause on everything, I'ma have to bring the whole city out. W-H-O-O-B-A-Z-O-O, that's it, was it, I come. W-H-O-B-A-Z-O-O, that's it, was it, I come.